renewable energy and ethical investing is just just don't look too close and you'll be fine hi everyone welcome back in this video i'm going to run through some etfs that you can buy if you wanted to invest in renewable energy companies in australia now this video is a bit of a follow-up to a previous video i did where i looked at renewable energy companies you could buy individually in australia and i said there was like 13 to start with and i specifically looked at five of them and i gave a bit more detail into that and i finished that video by saying I'll come back to you with some renewable energy ETFs that you could buy that covered these renewable energy companies. And the idea was to try and find the overlap so you know exactly what to buy. And that's what we're gonna go through today. So buckle up, it's gonna be pretty exciting. So when you look on the Australian Stock Exchange, you realize that there are 200 ETFs to pick from. And what I've done is essentially narrowed it down to about 10 ETFs. And in my mind, what I was seeing was I'll have a table where on the left, you'll have all the renewable energy companies you can actually invest in, what I talked about in my previous video. And along the top, you will have ETFs that you can invest in. And the idea was we can find the overlap so you'll know, okay, this particular ETF covers three of the companies. This particular ETF only covers one of the companies. And this is what I found. This is now what the table looks like once it's completed. It's pretty disappointing, hey? Only two of the 10 ETFs we looked at actually invest in renewable energy companies. And one of the ETFs is actually not even investing in Australia. It's actually investing in countries outside of Australia, but I included it because it's investing in the New Zealand listing of two companies that we're interested in. I do apologize. I wish I could have shown you more, but this is the reality of the situation. If you want to invest in renewable energy companies in Australia through ETFs, there's not a lot of options. So this is what we have. We have Beta Shares Australian Leaders Fair, I've included the Vanguard Ethically Conscious Australian shares because this is one that should have had it, but they didn't have it. Disappointing. And then the last one on the end is Vanguard Ethically Conscious International shares VESG. So the two that you actually saw the green sections on were the one on the far left and the one on the far right, FAIR and VESG. I've thrown in VETH because it's a new ETF, came out in October, and it, has, and it was primely positioned to do it, but for whatever reason, they didn't do it. And I guess it's probably around the rules around their ETF listings that maybe they said they wanted certain liquidity or certain standards and all the renewable energy companies didn't meet it, obviously, and they didn't appear. Awkward, but this is the rundown. So with FAIR, you're looking at a $700 million market cap. It's one of the big ones. Fees are actually a bit high. 0.49%, $4.90 for every $1,000 you're investing. It's a, bit, it's a bit rich. It's a bit rich is all I'm saying. Top holdings, ResMed, Cochlear, CSL, Goodman Group, which is like a REIT. That's where they collect all the money and invest in like office buildings. And any money they have, they'll go and buy another office building and it's, it's pretty boring stuff, to be honest. And then they also have Meridian Mercury and I think that's New Solar. I've already forgotten what NEW stands for, but I think it's the solar company. Then on the far right, you've got Vanguard's Ethically International Shares. 145 million, pretty small for an ETF, 0.18%. So Vanguard, because it's bigger, I think they can be more aggressive with their fees. So you can see the two Vanguard ETFs are actually quite conservative, 0.18% and 0.16%. It has 1,500 companies. I think this ETF will probably grow over time because Vanguard's recently brought this one out as well. The top holdings are actually Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google. So obviously when they say ethical, they're not too worried about social media giants, which some companies will say they don't want social media giants or some ETFs will say we don't do social media giants. So you won't see them. Vanguard standard obviously allows them to do that. And then towards the end of their listing, they had Mercury and Meridian, but the New Zealand listings. So sometimes a company will list, or they'll be on both the Australian Stock Exchange and the New Zealand Stock Exchange. And this particular ETF, because it doesn't invest in Australia, actually invested in the New Zealand version of these companies. So I guess this is one of the things I wanted to point out when it came to investing in ETFs for renewable energy is you kind of have to do it like this. Because if you look too clearly, you'll be a little bit disappointed with what you see. I found companies that said they did renewable energy. I then looked at the ETFs that said they were interested in renewable energy and there was no overlap except for two or one and sort of with the other one. This is the thing, like if you, if you go blindly in and say, oh, I want to invest in renewable energy and I want to buy an ETF that does it and they say on the, on the printing, you know, on the box, they say they do it. But the reality is when you actually crack it open, you realize, oh, there's actually no renewable energy companies in Australia being invested in. It's a bit awkward. Now, all this being said, I'm actually still interested in renewable energy space. This actual process of making videos about renewable energy companies and renewable energy ETFs, has got me thinking about renewable energy as a potentially interesting area. And I'll just give you a quick snapshot why is because their operating costs might be quite low. 
And as an engineer, I know in an operating environment, you have to worry about maintenance fees of like a power plant and the input costs. But I can already see with renewable energy power plants, there's no input costs. Like you don't have to pay for the sun or the wind. It's not reliable, but you don't have to pay for it. And the maintenance costs, like what are the maintenance costs of a solar power plant? The thing just goes, just follows the sun. Maybe a couple of electrical motors. And then when it comes to the actual wind, the wind turbines, I mean, maybe the gearboxes need to be maintained every once in a while. Like it, I, I feel like these are very high margin businesses and I think it's an interesting area. It's just unfortunate there aren't a lot of companies to kind of play with in Australia, even though we're quite a capable country. So this interest in renewable energy has actually resulted in me acquiring this book, Superpower, Superpower, I thought it was Superpowers for a second, Superpower, Australia's Low Carbon Opportunity. And I'll probably do a book review on this book at some point in the future, not anytime soon, but at some point in the future, because I think Renewable energy is quite an interesting area. Um, I know as well, FMG's kind of going to dabble in it a bit with uh, Andrew Forrest. So interesting area. Look out for my review on this book at some point in the future. But for now, that's probably all I'll do on renewable energy and renewable energy ETFs. I think you guys are now well versed on the whole idea around renewable energy and ethical investing is just, just don't look too close and you'll be fine. All right, see you in the next video. Bye for now.